Hi everyone, Marcus Mods here, and today I've got a bit of a puzzle to solve. A while back I was watching the How We Make Pedals episode of the JHS show, and I noticed that they use a single throw foot switch in their main line of pedals. See this switch here? It only has two output prongs, which means it can only make a single electrical connection. Now this kind of tripped me up, given that your typical 3PDT switch, which is the standard type used in true bypass switching, has nine connections. It got me wondering. How in the hell do they do it? How do you make true bypass with only a single connection? Well, in today's video, I figured out how to do it, and I've broken it down for you. We're going to go into two parts, this intro, and then implementing the circuit. Timestamps are below, and there's also a list of the parts that I used below. Some of those links are affiliate links. If you decide that you want to build along and try to do this yourself, please use those links. It really helps support the channel. I've also linked a couple previous videos below where I go through how to use a Panasonic TQ series relay and how to use a JFET as a shunt switch. If you get confused on how we're doing our true bypass switching, please go back and check those out. They help explain a couple of the components that we'll need to do our true bypass. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. In order to understand the problem we're trying to solve, let's look at a normal 3PDT switch. So this switch has nine connections, and it's easiest to think of them as three columns of connections. So usually, the way this would work is your guitar signal would come in on the left side, go out on the farthest right side, and then the middle part would control your LED. On the relay that we're using, though, we've only got the equivalent of a DPDT switch. So that's the equivalent of two of those rows of connections. So we need to figure out some way to add back in that LED functionality without having that middle row on our switch. The other part of the problem we're looking at is economic. In order to understand it, we need to look into the economics of building pedals. The most expensive part of building pedals, or whatever you're going to build, is most likely time. It takes a lot of time to put things together, and time costs money, especially when you've got employees that are depending on the profits from your business for their paychecks. If you're a company like JHS and you're selling over 100,000 pedals a year, taking the time to wire eight different connections on that old 3PDT switch adds up to a lot of man hours. Instead, it makes more economic sense to let the robots at your PCB house add our relay, a JFET, and a few transistors to the board. There's a little extra parts cost in doing this, but it's more than made up for in the time savings that you get from not having to have your employees wire 3 PDT switches. Fair warning, these relays are a couple dollars a piece, and because of that, they might not be economical for smaller builders where your time is the cheaper part of the building process because you're doing it as a passion, but it's just something cool to learn and it might be helpful in a project down the road. In typical Marcus Mods fashion, I'm gonna go ahead and flash the schematic that we're gonna use for our true bypass switching. This is basically giving you the answer beforehand, and it's meant to be a help for those of you who already have some background in electronics. It's also downloadable in the description below. All right, Marcus from the end of the TQ series circuit relay video here, and we've already got those components on the board because that's going to be our starting point for our true bypass switching like the pros. So now we'll go ahead and start adding our components to our board so that we can have true bypass switching like the pros. So we've got that relay already on the board, and that's going to be routing our guitar signal. That's the same as those two outer columns of our 3PDT switch. Now we need to add in a JFET shunt switch to control our LED. So we'll go ahead and put our JFET on the board. From there, we'll need to go ahead and add our 1K resistors from gate to ground and from source to ground. And then after we've got those connected, we'll need to go ahead and add our 10K resistor from our plus nine volt rail to the drain on our JFET. Once we've got that going, we will go ahead and add the LED. In this case, I'm using a red LED. We'll go ahead and connect the long leg to the drain of our JFET and then the short leg, which is negative, to ground. And finally, the last thing we need to do is we need a control voltage to control our JFET shunt switch. So we'll go ahead and add a jumper wire between pin one of our relay and the source on our JFET. From there, we can go ahead and flip our switch, and we should see the LEDs change, the relay LEDs change to blue, signaling that it switched to the on position, 
and then our JFET LED comes on. So now we've got a functional circuit that we can use for true bypass switching like the pros. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe. Never stop learning. And remember, make cool sh